That is Hashem today's daf of Masechta Baba Kama Daf Yud Beis. And we were going to begin by uh, the last statement, or second to the last statement, but we're going to have from Amar Ula Amar Abelaza. We were discussing these comments um, uh, that Ula. Once we brought up the name Ula, saying in the name of Abelaza, we start bringing in other thing, other halachas that he said. The Amar Ula Amar Abelaza. Ula said in the name of Abelaza. Shoyma Shemosa Shoyma. A, a watchman who is take who took on the responsibility to watch an item, and then he he shifted his his responsibility to some to another shimer. So he gave the responsibility without permission from the owner to another to another shimer. So then Potter, he's exempt from all the obligations of the shimer because he hired he gave it over to somebody else to do the watching. Veloimi you, you don't have to say this. If he was a shoymechina, he was an unpaid watchman. An unpaid watchman is not liable for theft and uh, for theft. And if he was an unpaid watchman and he hired somebody to take his place, Shemasa, he gave it over to a, a paid watchman. Certainly that's okay. The Aluya Alye Lishmirasa, because he's making the Shmira better. Because now the, with the paid watchman, if a theft happens, um, the paid watchman will have to pay. Ella Afila, but even if it was a Shoimesocha that gave it over to a Shoimer Chinam. So now the original uh, Shomer was a paid watchman and he hired someone to take his place. He didn't even pay him. He said, You're going to be the free watchman. So he downgraded the Shmira. Nami Potter. He's still Potter. Why? Shahare Mosa Lebendas, he gave it over to um, somebody who's intelligent. So if he gave it over to a Shoim, for a gave it over to a Shoimer Chinam, to an unpaid watchman, and 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 some on an event, you know, some uh, some event that surprised everybody happened, and uh, then the original Shimer is Potter, despite the fact that he downgraded the Shmira by giving it from being a paid watchman to an unpaid watchman. So that was the opinion of Ula in the name of Rablaza. Says the Gemara, Rava Amar, Rava says, Shimer Shemasa, the Shimer Chayev. Once a Shimer, uh, without the permission of the owner, hires somebody else, another Shaymer, to take his place, he is still liable. The Loimabai, you don't have to say this, if he was a paid watchman and he gave it over to a free watchman, the Guru the Guru Gari Lishmira, so he downgraded the Shmira, certainly uh he's gonna be liable. Even even if he was a Shaymechinam that gave it over <laughs> to a paid watchman. And so therefore uh, he's actually upgrading the Shmira. Chayev, he's still liable. If some something happened that uh, an oinus happened, something that's nobody's fault, the Shemechinam will still be Chayev to pay for that oinus. Why? The Amale, because the owner of the item could say, At Muhammad li bishvua. I trusted you if you swear. Hi, like Muhammad li bishvua, but I wouldn't trust him. In other words, when uh, oinus happens, a nobody's fault, a no fault happens, the shimer generally will have to swear to the owner, it was it was not my fault, and 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 the item, you know, a lightning struck the item and, and it burnt it up. So then the, the shimer has to swear that that's what happened, and he's not liable. But once he gave it over from one shimer to another shimer, even if he upgraded the shmira, the owner could say, I don't trust you, I only trusted you to swear I wouldn't trust him. And you had no right to, to hire another Shemir to take your place. And that was Rava's opinion, which disagreed with Rabbi Lazar's opinion, who said that a Shemir, Shema the Shemir, is Potter. New Gemara. V'amu Ula Amr Rabbi Lazar. Another statement Ula said in the name of Rabbi Lazar. Hilka said the halacha is, let's say uh, a lender is trying to collect on a debt, so he can collect from uh, property, real estate, but he could also collect goyven min havadim. He could collect from the slaves, from the slaves. So we don't. It's a cryptic statement, because what are we talking about over here? If you're collecting a debt, you could collect from anything, pretty much. Amalei Rab Nachman Rab Ula. So Rab Nachman said to Ula, Amar Rab Loza, did Rab Loza say Afilum Yapsmi? Did Rab Loza say it 
even from Yusoyimim, that means from the estate. Now, when a person dies, the lender can only collect from real estate. He cannot collect from movable uh, property, movable items, because only real estate is, is basically mortgaged to the, to the loan. So the question was, certainly when a person has a loan that he wants to collect and the person died, he could collect, put a lien on the property. But what, what is the question that the Gemara is dealing is, what is a slave? How do you look at it as a slave? He's a human being. So do you look at him as like real estate or is he like a, like a, like movable items? Is he like a, a bicycle or a watch? What is a slave? So that, that was the question. So, so Rab Ula answered, Ula answered, Loi, me nay. Rab Lazar meant only from him. That means really avodim are movable items. So only when he's alive, you can collect, you can collect from the avodim to pay, get your loan payback. But once he dies, you cannot collect it from the assignment because avodim is a, is, is a din metaltalit. So says the Gemara, Minei, if that's what Rabbi Loza is teaching you, what that that from him, I feel a megleem adal kasve. What's the difference? Since the Evid is a movable item, you could collect from any movable item if the man who took the loan is still alive. You could take it from his cloak that it's on it or a suit that it's on his on his shoulders. In other words, anything you grab to collect your loan, you can keep. So what is the Chiddush? Answers the Gemara, Hocha Bamayaskin, here's something different. Really, avodim is metaltalim, but the 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 one that took the loan said that with this evid you'll be able to collect your loan despite being a movable item. And what happened? The guy sold it. The guys who took the loan sold the evid. So normally, once it's sold, if it's a movable item, you can't collect. But because he specifically, when he took the loan out, said, apoitiki, which means from this, you will have your payment. So therefore, even if he sold it, you can collect the item. Like Rava said, if you make your evid an apoitiki and you sell it, the, 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 the one that the lender could collect from it from the person that bought the evid. But shoyre apoitiki, if a man made his ox an apoitiki, uh, the uh, the place where you will be able to collect your debt, umacharin he sold the ox, ein balchoiv goyve mani. Once uh, that, then the balchoiv cannot collect from that ox. What's the difference? My tama, an evid and a shor are both movable items. Yet when an evid is made an apoitiki and, and it was sold, the balchoiv could collect. A ox was made an apoitiki and it was sold. You can't collect. The balchoy cannot collect. My tama. Ha is le koilov or less le koilov. When a person makes an evid apoitiki, everybody knows that it's really tied to a, a loan. And therefore, the purchaser that purchased it, if if he should have he should have known that there's a good risk that his ev, this evid that he purchased will be taken away. So and he took the risk. So therefore, we we penalize him that if it came down to it, the the loan can be collected from the evid despite that he purchased the evid. But a shor, nobody knows a shor was made in apoytiki. It doesn't have. It's not so well known. And therefore, he didn't know. You don't fault the purchaser for buying that ox because he didn't know it was apoytiki. And therefore, if a person made a shor and apoytiki, the balchayv will not be able to collect from it. Says the Gemara when you base him it off the basa denafik. After Rav Nachman left, Amalhu Ula Ula said, "Hachi Amar Rav Loza Afilam Yasmei." He said, "Ula said that you could collect avodim is even from the Yisoyim because an eved an eved is considered to be like karka, just like karka. Even after the person dies, you collect your loan from real estate. You can collect the loan after the person dies, even from the Yisoyim from eved because an eved has a din like karka." Amr Rab Nachman, Rab Nachman returned, Ishtam Tamten Ula. Ula was afraid of me because I hold uh, Evdin is Kimital Tilidami. So he waited till I left the room and then he said his opinion. Hava Uvde Ben Ardoi. There was these Yisoyim in Nerdoi that owed a debt. The Agbe Dayana Der Nerdoi. The judges of Nerdoi collected from the estate Avodim. Uh, so it must be they held its Karka. Have over the Pumpadisa, same thing in this great city of Pumpadisa. The Advi Rab Khanaba Bizna and Rab Khanaba Bizna collected, collected uh, Avodim 
for part of the debt from the estate of the Yisoyimim. Amalur of Nachman, so Rav Nachman uh, argued against Nardoi and Pompidisa, Zile Adure, you got to return the Avodim back to the estate. Viloi, if you're not going to return it, Magbina Luchu La Panaychu, I'm going to make the Yisoyimim come collect your houses from you. In other words, you paskin wrong. You have to return those Avodim. It, you cannot pay a debt from the estate uh, from Avodim, only from real estate. Amalei Rav Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman said to Rav Nachman, Ha Ula, Ula holds Evet is Metaltalin, Ha Rav uh, Evet is Karka, Ha Rav Loza, Rav Loza also Ha Evet is Karka, Ha Dayana Dinadoi, Ha Rachan of Abizna, Mar commands for you have all these great rabbis who hold an Evet is like Karka, <laughs> who do you hold like that? Where do you have a, a proof that an Evet could be like Metaltalin? Amalei, he said, So Rab, uh, Rab Nachman said, I know another brisa. The Tani Avini, Avimi taught prusbel, writing a prusbel. In other words, you know what writing a prusbel is that allows you to collect even after Shemitah. It's only if the, lend, the borrower had a piece of karka. But if he didn't have a piece of karka, for whatever the reason is, you have to own some real estate, then you can't write a prusbel. So prusbel, you can write a prusbel, chal al karka, only if the borrower had Karka, real estate, the Einuchal Alavadim, but it wouldn't work if you if if the borrower only had slaves, because this Brisa holds, as it seems, that 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 Avodim is a din metaltalin. Metaltalin niklin im hakarka. Now the Brisa says another thing. Avima teaches you something else. If you buy karka, automatically you get the metaltalin. For example, you buy a, a, a field. The tractor, you don't have to make a separate kinyan on the tractor that's in the field. Once you did a chazaka uh, uh, and showed ownership on the karka, you automatically, that's called kinyan agav, you get the metal, the movable items. The ain't a nikmin and avodim. But um, if you if you buy an eved, if you buy a slave, you can't own metal. Uh, just because you make you purchase an eved and, and you buy a slave, you don't own the tractor that's on the field. The evet is a din of metaltalin. And the evet is like a movable item. It's not It's not like karka. So that was the source of Rav Nachman's opinion that an evet is metaltalin. So it's a machlekis amaroim, says the Gemara, let us say it's a machlekis tanoim also. Because one b'risa says, so man is selling to somebody else slaves and karka. Hexik ba'avodim. If you do a chazaka, showing ownership on the slaves, so loikana karkois, you don't get the karka because presumably an evet is metaltalin. Bekarkois, bekarkois, if you if you make a chazaka on the karka, technically you could be kind of an evet because an evet is metaltalin, but the Bryce says loikana avodim, you don't you don't own the evet because an evet is not like a tractor that stays in one spot, it actually moves around. So therefore, this price will hold that ju just because you make a Kenyan on the Karka, you didn't automatically get the Evet. Now, but if you buy in Karkois Metaltalin, let's say a piece of land and a, and a, and a tractor, Hexit Bakarka, once you uh, displayed ownership on the piece of land, Kona Metaltalin, you get the tractor. The Metaltalin, but if you're just purchasing the tractor, like Kona Karka, you didn't automatically get the Karka. You have to make a separate Kenyan on the Karka. Avodim of metalpalim. Again, if you have slaves in metalpalim, so the brisa seems to hold avodim is like metalpalim. So hexik ba avodim loy kana metalpalim. If you just make show ownership on the slave, you're not going to be kind of metalpalim. Metalpalim loy kana avodim. If you purchase the metalpalim, you, you didn't automatically get the avodim. You have to make a separate. Kenyan on each one. So the only time Kenyan agav works, remember, if is when you're buying karka. If you buy karka, automatically you get you could be coined a metaltalim without making a separate Kenyan on the metaltalim. But it doesn't work in the reverse. Metaltalim, you can't be if you make a Kenyan on metaltalim, you don't you don't automatically get karka. So this brisa seems to hold that avodim are metaltalim. Vahatanya, but then we learned in another brisa hechzik ba avodim kona metaltalim that if you make a Kenyan in the avodim. So so it's it's and and, and avodim and this brisa seems to hold like it's karka. You do get the metaltalim. So uh, my love, let's say the This is the argument. One brisa holds avodim is like karka. And therefore, if you coin in the avodim, if you make a kinyan eved, you get the tractor that's in the field. And the first brisa holds avodim is like metaltalim. 
Alma Rav Ike, Rav Ike explained the Rav Ami, the Kuli Alma, both prices hold Avodim Kimikarki Dami. Everybody, every price holds Avodim Kimikarki Dami. But the time, the second price says uh, that you kinda, that if you make a Kenyan on an Eved, you automatically coin a tractor shopper. That makes sense because an Eved isn't like Makarka. But how did Tadia Loikana, the price that holds that you're not coin up? Because King and Agav, yes, it would work on Karka, and an Evid is like Karka, but it's a certain type of Karka, and a Karka that doesn't move around. But in and Karka to do me the arm and Mozart's Behuda, the Lainaidi. We need a Karka that, like the cities, the fortified cities of Yehuda, that don't move around. Because how do you know what is the source? What is the source that there is such a thing of Kenyan Agav? I make a Kenyan in the Karka, I automatically get the Metaltalim. That's a Pusik. And that Pusik was only said by Karka that doesn't move around. The Karka is that stationary. The uh, real estate, that uh, property that stays in one place. But even though an Evet is a Karka, since it moves around, Kenyan Agav would not work. So now we learned in the Mishnah, the Chosim Shem Leim Mechrayis, the Chosim that you can't put a lien on, which is Metaltalim. Nikinin can be purchased in the Chosim Shem Leim Mechrayis, can be purchased by making a Kenyan on things that you could put a lien on, which is Karka, Kesef, Shtar, Bechazaka. If you buy the Karka with Kesef or with a Shtar or with doing a showing ownership, then automatically you get the Metaltalim. How do you know that? But the post says, The post says he gave a lot of metal, uh, uh, silver, gold, and, and clothing together with with the with the fortified cities. So we see that there's such a thing in the in the Navi called Kenyan Agav, but only if the Karka is Mitsuris Yehuda, if it's a regular city, but not if it's a movable type of Karka called an Evid. That was the first opinion. Iki the Amri, others say that 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 you can do the reverse. That two prices, Idi, the Kuliyama of the Dami. Both prices hold of the is like Metaltalim. The hard to tell you that that we learned loikana shaper, because if Avde is metaltal, if you make a kinyan on the eved, you don't get a tractor, because an eved is metaltal. How do you tell you kana that that says you kana the oidin olav? It's a type of metaltal that's on the eved. So, for example, if you make a kinyan on the eved and he's wearing a gold watch. So then you coin the watch, not because uh, a king in Agav. It's be it works because once something that is in your domain, like a, it's in your chotzer, something that's in your front yard, you coin it automatically. So the fact that you made a king in on the Eved and he's wearing a gold watch, you get the gold watch. Says the Gemara Vichy, I didn't all of my hava. Just because it's the watch is on him, so why would you be kind of the watch? If if you're considering the Eved Metaltalim and you wanted him to be kind of because it's he's your property, but it, he can move around. The Chotzimahalechas Loikana, any any type of property that you have that moves around will not be able to make a Kenyan just because something is on it. The Chitayim, you're going to say, but I made that the Eved was standing in one place, if it could potentially walk, it's not kind of. So even if it's standing in one place, it wouldn't be kind of. So the Gemara answers, we're talking about the Eved, he's tied up, so he can't walk around, and Toysus adds he's sleeping also as well. So really, he's like a chatzah, he's like a dead chatzah that you have, that's not, that stays in one place, and therefore, if you make a king on the Eved, and he's wearing a gold watch, then you can actually be coined to the watch, and that, but albeit that this price, uh, this version holds, that both prices hold, Eved is like Metalto. Now the Gemara asks the question, but Tanya, we learned to the price, Hexabakarka kona avodim, that if you make a Kenyan on the Karka, you get the, the slaves automatically. And the first Bryce said, Hexik Ba'akarka, Loikana Avodim. If you make a Kenyan on Karka, you don't get the Evet. How do you square off these two Bryces? And says the Gemara, Hosim Ba'oimdin Besoicha. The second Bryce that says, if you make a Kenyan on the Karka, you get the Evet, is when the Evet is standing inside of it. So Michlal, let us understand it. The high loikana, the one that says, the first price that says, you're not going to the Evid if you make a Kenyan on the Karka, when the Evid is not in the Karka, he's somewhere else. Honich, that makes perfect sense. If you hold Evid is like Metaltalim, so then in order for Kenyan Agav to work, you need the tractor to be in the Karka. 
So therefore, the brisa that says king in agav in the second brisa hechzebekarka kona avodim is because an eved is metaltolim, and therefore he has to be in the karka in order to be koina agav the karka. But the brisa that previous brisa that says hechzek in the top that says hechzebekarka loy kona avodim is because the eved is not in the karka; he's like somewhere else. Uh, he's walking the streets. He's not in the in the field itself. That makes perfect self. But if you hold the Amri Avdi Kimakarki Dami, that everybody holds Evid is Makarki Dami, Lomali under Mesoicha, why do we need the Evid to be in the Karka itself? The, the halacha is that if I buy a bunch of fields, once I make a king in one of the fields, I coin all the fields, even though one field is not in, the, in technically in one in, in, on top of another field. If you sell 10 fields located in 10 different countries, if you show ownership on one of them, so if you buy a field in Italy, and at the same time, you're purchasing a field in America. Once you make the king in the, the field in Italy, you get the field in America, wherever those 10 fields are. So therefore, if Evid is Kimakarki dummy, it shouldn't matter if the Evid is on the field or not. So the Gemara says, according to your reasoning, even if you hold Evid is like Metalto Lidami, so Gemara asks, is asking back, you still don't need Oymi Besaycha because we go to Ahmed Beis, Hakaim alone, we have our Lacha, we have we know uh, 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 the the loybi in Savurim. When you're buying Kenyan agav, you don't need the metal to them to be in the in, exactly on the on the land. I kept saying that you're buying a karka, you need the tractor in the place. The halacha is that you don't need the tractor to be in the karka itself. The tractor could be located somewhere else, and you once you make the Kenyan in the karka, you get the tractor. So why should it make a difference? Even if you hold Avde Kimakarki uh, why should it make a difference that the that the Evit should be on the field? You have to say it the same thing. That because an Evit is a type of metalton that could have, is mobile, can move around. So therefore, in order for a Kenyan Agav to work, we need the Evit to be in place in the in the karka that you're purchasing. But a tractor doesn't move around. So therefore, it there we don't need it to be on on the field that you're purchasing. It could be located somewhere else, and it'll be kind of the Kenya agav will be affected. So hachinam is the same thing. Even if you hold of these kimakarke dami shani kimakarke did nadi mikarke did loy nadi. It's different the karka that moves around from karka that doesn't move around. That that means the karka that doesn't move around. Once you make a kinyan in one karka, you get them all. But an, a karka that that moves around in order to purchase one karka to work with the other karka, you need the evet to be exactly in the karka that you're making the purchase in. Uh, so therefore, you need the evet to be inside the karka that you're originally purchasing. Even if you hold evet as kimakaka, because he moves around, it doesn't work. Hossam over there, when you're buying 10 fields located in 10 different countries, Sadna Da'ara Chadhu, the crust of the earth, basically is, is one block. And therefore, each field is really only one part of a bigger whole. And therefore, therefore that does, this doesn't work when you're purchasing a, 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 a karka and slaves together, because a, 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 an evet is not attached to the earth and is separate from the karka itself. Okay, next Gemara. We learned in the Mishnah the Chosim She'ein Bohen Mi'ila that a Chosim that that the Mishnah says that you, if you gore your friends, uh, if your friends animal, you have to pay, and as long as the the item, the possession is something that you wouldn't have to bring a korban Mi'ila, right? If it's Hegdish, then if you gore Hegdish, you don't have to pay, but the, by saying it this way. The the the, the Brisa, the Mishnah is basically saying that there is an in between way that you'll be still be obligated to pay. For example, Meil Hu Delespo. It it's a type of uh, hegdish that you don't have Meila, Habigdash Kachi, but it's still holy. And despite being holy, you will have to if your animal gores that holy animal, you'll have to pay. What are we talking about over here? There's two types of hegdishes. One's called kachim kachim kachim, and one's called kachim kalim. Let's focus in on kachim kalim. If if your friend has a carbon shlomim, that an animal that he designated to be a carbon shlomim that he's going to bring to the base of migdash, so the mission is teaching you, because if you if you misuse that kachim that shlomim, you wouldn't have to bring a carbon meila. It's not such a big violation. So we consider that 
animal, although it's designated to being, bring a carbon shlomim, still belonging to your friend. And therefore, if your ox will gore that ox, you're going to have to make a replacement, you know, ox for the, for the ox that, that was got killed. Because so cause despite being, it was designated as a carbon, it was Kachikalim. And Kachikalim still, the money the, of the Kachikalim belongs still to the owner. Mantana, who's the author of our Mishnah? Our Mishnah is talking about Kochi Kalim, and it goes according to Rabbi Yossi Aglidi, the Omar, who said, that the Kochi Kalim has a din that still retains the owner of the Momen Bailem. It still belongs to the original owner, despite the fact that he has to bring it up to the base of Migdash. It's still called Shoy Re'eyu. And if, the, if another animal gored it, that animal, the owner of that animal, has to pay you. The Tanya, we learned in the Brisa. Umal Amal Bashem. This talks about if you, if if let's say you found by many different areas in in, in the Chumash, and, and if if you steal something and you deny it, and you and you make a shvua, the Torah tells us that you have to pay the principal twenty percent more and bring in carbon asha, and because mal mal b'shem, you you basically betray God. So what does that include? How did you betray God? The rabbits kachin kalim shehem amoynoi. Uh, the Rabbi Yosei Aglili. Rabbi Yosei Aglili said the Kachin Kalim is considered your retains the ownership, which still belongs to its original owner. It's your money. That's that's the opinion of Rabbi Yosei Aglili. So applying that to over here, if your mazik Kachin Kalim, you still have to pay. That's the din. You magic Kachin Kachim, you don't have to pay. But if you mazik Kachin Kalim, you do have to pay. But Tran, we learned in the Mishnah, wait a second. If uh, if you're going to consider that Kachin Kalim is considered, retains the ownership of it, of, of the, is still considered the, the, the property and the money of its original owner, then you should be Mekadish, you should be able to be Mekadish and Isha. Let's finish off over here. What now? We learned in the Mishnah, a Makadish Bekelkoi, Bain Bekachi Kachim, Bain Bekachi Kalim, Aina Mekudashes. That that Mishnah says that if you're Makadish, a woman with your portion of Kachi Kachim or Kachi Kalim, Aina Mekudashes. It's not, you didn't give her anything. The woman's not Mekudashes. But Rabbi Yaisi Galili said that Kachim Kalim is Momin Balim, belongs to the owner. Lema, would you say that Mishnah, the like Rabbi Yaisi Galili? Answers the Gemara, we'll end here. I feel the tamer Rabbi Yosei Aglili. You can say that Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yosei Aglili. Ki Omar Rabbi Yosei Aglili. When did Rabbi Yosei Aglili say that Kotche Kalim is belongs is mum and Bailim, belongs to the original owner Mechayim while the animal is alive, while the animal is still alive and the, the owner has to bring it as a carbon shlamim, it's still considered his money. Once he brought it to the base of Migdash and it was slaughtered, now he's bringing home slaughtered meat, holy meat. How does he own this meat? It's Hashem giving him this meat. So it's not his money anymore. And that's what that Mishnah says that if you make with that after Shechita uh, meat to a woman, she's not Mukadashas because you're not giving her anything that belongs to you. The bottom line is. But our Mishnah that says that you have to pay if you damage a a, 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 a holy animal, it's talking about Kachi Kalim, and we go according to the opinion of Yosei Gli, that while the animal is still alive, it's still considered mamen balim, money belonging to its original owner. Okay, we'll stop here. Shkaya, thank you. Okay, very good. Very good I'll finish this with you tomorrow. It's a small yes. left. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. Zagazent, everybody. Shkaya, have a good night.